So you have a bug with Magento, which does happen from time to time. Then you stumble onto a PR on GitHub that looks like there's already a fix merged in or one pending. Well, you could wait until the next release to get this update in, but that can take many weeks or many months, as we all know. And this is already an important fix that you'd really like to push out sometime over the next couple days or even today. There's a way to apply the related commit by using the Seawagon's Composer Patches module with Git and Composer, and I'll show you how to do this right now. Let's say we have a bug in Magento and it isn't translating prefixes such as Mr. and Mrs. or suffixes in a current name. Uh, then when you head over to GitHub and lo and behold, there's a fix for it. So uh, there's already a closed issue, it's closed and there's a merged PR and we can check out and go to the PR to find out what has changed. And uh, the code updates aren't huge but there are quite a bit of them and we don't want to copy and paste this over to our own uh, code and they are an app code. Uh, yeah, there's a really easy way to do this with uh, a git diff or a patch right from GitHub. Uh, so if we head back to the conversation tab and we go to the URL, uh, this is pretty neat. If we just type in dot diff, we will get a git diff of the changes in this PR. Uh, so this is pretty neat and we can take this diff patch file and now apply it to our own Magento store. Now that we have this diff file, uh, we'll, we'll need to make some updates to it in order to apply it to our store. Uh, you'll notice that all of the locations in this diff reference app code Magento and that vendor Magento, which is where our normal install would be with Composer. Uh, so we really need to update this. Uh, so we will create and uh, a new folder for these patches and download this file to it. First, we will create a directory at patches composer. So if you don't already have a directory at that path, go ahead and create it. And now we will go into terminal and go to that directory, which is patches composer. And we can use curl to grab that patch file and download it to this location. So let's go back to our diff file and grab the URL, copy it to the clipboard, and we'll go back to terminal and paste it in. And then all we need to do is add on an arrow sign and then uh, the name of the file that we'd like to save this as. I always like to prefix um, these files with what they are. So this is a PR, so I will prefix it with that, and then a dash, and then the PR number. So this will be 30413 and then end it with .diff. And curl will go ahead and download that file over to our patches composer directory. And now we see that this diff is located on our file system now. Now our next step is to rename all of these paths from app code Magento to vendor slash Magento, but we have to also put, put it in the correct location. So this is the customer module and if you work with Magento at all, you'll know that that is located at vendor slash Magento slash module dash customer. And if we scroll down, there's actually two different modules that this uh, applies to. It also applies to the sales module. So we'll have to update both of those locations. So what we can do is go ahead and copy this first location app code Magento customer. Now we will go to edit, find, and then replace in files. And we will search for app code Magento customer. And we want to replace it with vendor slash Magento slash module dash customer. And we want to only replace this in our patches composer directory. So go ahead and click replace all. And it'll ask you if you want to replace all occurrences, hit replace. And that'll update every single reference in this file. And we'll also do the same with the Magento sales reference. So let's go ahead and copy this directory, go up to edit, find, replace in files, and we'll replace app code Magento sales with vendor Magento 
module dash sales. Go ahead and replace all. And there it goes, it replaced that. Now this file is pretty ready to go. And we can move on to the next step, which is actually separating this file out into two different patches, uh, one for each module. Since it affected two different modules, we can't actually have this all in one file based on how the C Wiggins module works. So let's go ahead and take the contents of this Magento sales part and cut it out. And we will create a new file at PR-30413. And then I also like to suffix this with the module name. So this will be sales.diff and go ahead and paste it in. And then we can go back to and to our other file and go ahead and just actually rename this to dash customer. And now we have two different diff files, both relating to these specific modules that they are changing. Now that we have these two diffs, before we actually try to apply them, we want to test out the changes first to make sure they succeed. So we will go ahead and open up terminal and let me go ahead and clear this out and go back to the main directory. Now we are going to test out applying this patch with the patch command that is included in all installs of Mac and Linux. And we're going to patch in the dash dash dry dash run flag. And what this will do is test out and make sure there are no errors when applying these diff patches. You'll see why this is important in just a second. Next comes a less than sign, which is we're really piping content into this command. And this will be location of patches, composer, and then our first um, diff, which will be customer. And we'll see we actually have a failure here. It looks like everything patched successfully, but one out of two hunks failed when patching helper slash view.php. Uh, so let's go ahead and open this file and find out what's going on. So we'll take this location, copy it to the clipboard, and go ahead and open the file with Command Shift O, paste it in, and we will go ahead and open this file. And then we will check out our diff. And then we will search for helper view, which is right actually here. Uh, so this helper file contains two chunks, two, two hunks. This is the first hunk and the second hunk. So each of these hunks is uh, delineated with a double at sign. Uh, so there are two changes in this first hunk and one change in this second hunk. Uh, so just, just so you know the terminology and know how this works. So it says one of two hunks failed. Uh, so that would be this hunk that failed. So what we need to do is actually look at this file, look at this core file and find out why it failed. Um, if it failed, it's because most likely the previous version of the code that it references had some sort of error in it or didn't exactly match uh, what this change set says. So we will start off with this first hunk, which is an at inherit doc, and it has two brackets surrounding it. And we'll see it references underscore underscore construct. So that's where the actual diff starts. That's the function it starts at. Uh, but this is actually above the get customer name function. So we can search for either of those. Uh, get customer name is right here. And we'll see this at inherit, inherit doc. And we'll see it actually doesn't have bracket signs. So this is probably the error that we're dealing with. So let's go back to the diff. And we can't just remove these two lines based on how these diff chunks work. It's or hunks work. It's very, um, very intricate. It expects it to be in a certain format and has checksum matches and things like that. So the easiest way actually to apply this would say, hey, take this block of text, which we know exists. It's at inherit doc without the brackets and go ahead and replace it with this, which is exactly the same line. And that way it'll kind of trick this diff into um, applying automatically without error. So let's go ahead and save this 
and go ahead back to our dry run command. And then we will try to execute it again. And we see everything patched successfully now. So that was the error. So you'll need to do this if you have any kind of errors at all. Uh, that's usually the best method to do it. Otherwise, you sort of have to regenerate a diff uh, to uh, properly apply to the core code. And let's go ahead and do the same for the sales diff and make sure that can apply and it can. So that file is already all set. So our next step is we, we don't want to be running this patch line all the time manually on deployments or anything. So we want it to be automated on deployments in sort of a pipeline. Uh, so um, we could just run this patch line without that dash dash dry dash run flag and it will actually patch the files. Uh, but we want those to be automatically applied. So luckily someone created a module for composer. It's cwiggins slash composer dash packages. It's a very popular module and it's made just for this scenario. So first we will need to install it. So let's go ahead. Uh, I am running my Docker Magento setup. Uh, so I will need to run bin slash composer out of my source directory. But if you're using any other sort of method, you could just run composer and then type composer require C wagons slash composer dash patches and go ahead and execute this. And this will install this module locally on your file system. Now this module uses a combination of being a composer plugin and uses git apply to go along with it behind the scenes. Uh, so it automatically patches and runs these patches anytime you run composer install or composer update. Uh, it looks for a specific property in composer.json. So let's go ahead and open up that file. And this will be in the root of our directory at composer.json. And at the bottom of this file, so this is the standard composer.json file that comes in Magento, you'll see this extra property. Magento will usually have this Magento force override property already. If it doesn't, go ahead and create uh, just this extra property. That's all you need. And we will go ahead and create another property called patches. And this is what this C Wiggins composer packages module looks for. Now the next property is the module that we wish to patch. Um, so the first module we want to patch alphabetically will be Magento slash module dash customer. And this is relative to the vendor directory and it has to match the exact vendor package, vendor name, package name at that vendor location. If it doesn't, this will not work. Uh, our next uh, step is to create an object for this property. And this will take a key value store. The first key is the name of the patch that we'd like to um, create, like sort of like an ID. And the second value is the location of the patch or the file name. So what we, um, what we want to do first for the key I like to name this prefixed with my patch name. So since we're patching the customer module, I will name this PR-30413-customer. And I use a, usually add on a colon and then the name of the patch. It's sort of providing the developer documentation with what this patch is doing. If we head back to GitHub and go back to that conversations tab, and grab the name of the PR. So this is for prefixing, prefix and suffix translation. So that's a good enough description for us, especially since we have the PR number to go along with it. So let's copy that value and paste it in to this ID. It doesn't matter how long it is, as long as it is unique between other PRs. And next comes the location of this patch, which will be patches slash composer slash PR dash 30413 dash customer dot diff. And we can expand that out and see it. And this is exactly the format that it expects it to follow. And we'll want to do the same thing for the sales module. So we will go ahead and just duplicate this line out. I just select it and hit command D. 
and rename this to Magento slash module dash sales. And we will rename this sales. It needs to be a different ID from this. Otherwise, the C Wiggins module will only execute the first iteration of the ID with the unique name. Uh, so just be sure it's um, different, but it still has the same PR number and the same description. So we know what it does. It's very self-documenting. And then we will change this to the sales diff. And then this part is all set and ready for this module to execute. Now that these patch definitions have been set up, uh, the Seawagons Composer plugin will detect these patches and execute them every time Composer install or Composer update is executed. So let's go ahead and open back up the terminal and let's just run Composer install or for me, bin Composer install. And we'll notice something pretty unique about this. So if we scroll up and look at what's going on when we run Composer install, it says it's actually removing the module dash customer and module dash sales models. It's removing the folders. It reinstalls them uh, and then it applies the patches. So it's doing this because um, I think it's assuming that you may have changes locally or uh, you should never be modifying files in vendor. But if you are, this just sort of resets it to make sure the patches apply. I guess this could uh, potentially happen on production or staging as well. Developers should really never be modifying files in vendor, at least from the installed version. So um, I'm not sure why they, they do this. It's probably just a safeguard. But um, yeah, and then it just applies the patches and it looks like they were applied successfully. So if we go ahead and look at the files in our on our file system, uh, let's look at this sales diff for an easy example since we just have one change set here. Let's go ahead and open up this core file and let's make sure we are opening up the correct file, which is vendor Magento module dash sales model order address. And if we search for git name, um, which is the function that it's being applied in, which is this function right here, we can see that this prefix and the suffix are now wrapped in the translation function, which is exactly what this diff does. Previously, without this diff, uh, they were not, which is the whole issue of the translations. So yeah, everything, it looks like it applied correctly and works. So I really hope you uh, learned something new about Composer patches and you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give a like on this video. I really appreciate it. It'll help me support my channel. And you can also consider following me on Twitter or LinkedIn at the handle Mark Schust, just my name. You can find me very easily. And if you'd like more videos like this, uh, you should strongly consider becoming a university student. Uh, this will give you access to all of my current and future Magento courses and uh, everything else at M Academy, including access to campus where there are many other lessons uh, just like this in the community. So uh, just be sure to check it out. Thanks so much for watching and I really appreciate it. Take care.